Welcome everyone uh, to this coffee lecture, how to avoid plagiarism. Okay, so I am Antonio Nsikari, I'm a librarian at the APFL library. And uh, we, have, we will have a 10 minutes presented presentation about uh, uh, self plagiarism and five minutes uh, of question. Okay, so, okay, uh, for today's objective, we will try to uh, better understand basically what is and what is not self plagiarism. Okay, so for so, uh, first a few definitions. So, first plagiarism. So, plagiarism is basically letting the readers believe that you are the author uh, of what they read, though you are not. And self plagiarism is letting the readers believe that what they read is a new input of yours, though it's not. Okay. And both of them can be done intentionally or by excessive negligence, all right? So plagiarism is more kind of a, a legal issue because uh, it implies a breach of copyright. Self-plagiarism doesn't necessarily imply a breach of copyright. So it's, uh, it's more kind of, most of the time, it's more, uh, more kind of ethical issue because normally we expect um, researchers to, um, um, uh, to to uh, bring new inputs as much as possible in the uh, in their publications, and not only copy paste uh, their previous work. But um, that said, uh, every everybody though um, uh, agree to say that uh, we always have to uh, refer to our previous work. It's inevitable and even suitable in uh, most of the time, because most of researchers will work on the same concept, um, sometimes all along their career, or will have to publish several uh, publications about the same concept. So they will have to refer to their previous uh, publication. And it's not a problem as long as it's done uh, appropriately. So how could we refer to our own previous uh, publication. So, first to the first solution may be self quotation. Okay, so self quotation is basically copy paste um, an extract, a section of an already existing document, highlight it in the text, uh, for instance, in quotes or in another way, and give the full reference uh, of the original quote. So, uh, citation in the text and complete reference in the bibliography. And it doesn't require any authorization because citation is a right, okay? Uh, that's a solution to refer to a, a previous work. However, the problem, uh, problems which might uh, happen with uh, self-quotation is that in the case we would have to refer a lot to uh, um, our previous works, then we will have a lot of, um, a lot of text which would be highlighted in our new uh, new uh, publication, and it would seem pretty awkward or even unacceptable for some editors. It would be felt like a, an overemphasis on our previous work. So uh, it could be a problem in some cases. Another way to another way to refer to our own previous work is to use um, paraphrase. So unlike self quotation, it's not about copy paste and extract, but we phrased it in our own uh, words and give, uh, also give the full reference. Uh, and it doesn't need to be uh, highlighted in the text. Uh, it doesn't require any, any authorization to, uh, to because it's also a kind of citation. But the problems with, uh, with paraphrase is that it can always be done okay, because there is not always synonyms for everything. The risk with the paraphrase is that maybe the result may be less clear or even altered from the original uh, section. And sometimes it may be felt like a waste of time because if we spend uh, some time to uh, wrote something the perfect way to explain it, it may be felt as a waste of time to find a second best way to, uh, to rephrase it. So in the case uh, when self-quotation and paraphrase which um, which might not be appropriate, then there may be a third solution, which could be is text recycling. Okay, uh, and 
that's the part where this presentation becomes dangerous looking. So text recycling is uh, something which becomes very important in the pub scientific publication world. It's a word, it's a term which is uh, often related to self plagiarism, but it's not. Okay, we will see that. So there is currently a group of researchers, American group of researchers, so the Text Recycling Research Project, funded by the uh, National Science Foundation in the US, which is currently working on this issue uh, of text recycling. And um, they come to this definition of text recycling. It's quite a challenge to, defi uh, to define it, but they come to this definition last year, which is text recycling is the reuse of textual material, prose, visuals, or equations in a new document where one, the material of the new document is identical to that of the source or substantively equivalent in both form and content. Two, the material is not presented as a new document as a quotation uh, via quotation marks or blocking indentation. And three, at least one of the author is the new uh, of the new document is also an author of the prior document. Okay, so it's important because this definition suggests that we might copy paste um, section of documents or substantively same section of documents without uh, without highlighting them in the text but only by giving the the source. Which practice? would in theory be uh, in contradiction with uh, a lot of uh, citation code of a lot of uh, educational institution, but in some, in some cases would be accepted. For instance, in the case of uh, um, um, an article, which would be turned into a chapter of a, of a thesis, for instance. So I insist that Text recycling is not a self plagiarism. Okay, self plagiarism is an unethical behavior. Remember, it's done intentionally or by excessive negligence. Text recycling is a neutral term. Okay, and uh, text recycling might be, in some cases, appropriate or it might be not. It depends on different factors legal, ethical, and contextual factors. Okay, so. How could we appropriately use text recycling? Well, that's quite a challenge to, to define it. The text recycling research uh, project is currently working on uh, setting guidelines for editors and authors uh, about how to reuse text recycling in their publications. In the meanwhile, Biomed Central, uh, in collaboration with, uh, uh, with the COPE, the Committee of Publication Ethics, already set such guidelines uh, to the uh, attention of editors to help them uh, manage uh, uh, when they have a submitted paper which uh, where there might be some uh, text recycling. So they invite the editors to be careful to this different point, consider these different points um, in the case of text recycling. So maybe first see how much text is recycled, where in the article the text recycling occurs. So text recycling is more likely to be acceptable in the introduction of methods part than in the results, for instance. Whether the source of the recycled text has been acknowledged, whether the article in the research on is a research or non-research article, for instance, uh, uh, text recycling is unlikely to be uh, suitable in a, in a re review, for instance, whether, and whether there is a breach of copyright. Uh, in most editor contracts, there is a full transfer of copyright to the editor. So if, if text recycling would um, imply to uh, reproduce um, substantively um, whole documents, uh, it may need an authorization for that. And in some circumstances, circumstances cultural norms at the time of place of uh, publication. Okay, so what we can say in conclusion is that self-plagiarism is a complex issue. Okay, so detect similarities is easy because nowadays everyone has a identicate or similar tool. And so every similarities will be uh, detected for sure. 
But formally declare the presence of self plagiarism is not easy, okay? It depends once again on different factors, legal, ethical, and contextual factors. So that's why each case must be handled individually. And then uh, maybe the best cure against self plagiarism is transparency, okay? Be clear in your intentions when you want to publish something, refer to your own previous work, use of quotation, use paraphrase, and if neither of them will do, then communicate to the editors. Maybe you can, uh, maybe the text recycling would be appropriated in your case, and then you can find a solution with the, with the editors for how to do it, and send copies of every of your related works when submitted, so that the editors and reviewers may be uh, fully aware of what you, you wanna do and what you need to refer to. All right, so I'm done for this presentation. You can check the reference of this text recycling guidelines by Biomed Central and the text recycling defin research product definition. And they have also interesting uh, uh, sources which I invite you to check if you want. And now, thank you for your presence. I am done with this presentation. Okay, and I will try to answer your question as much as possible. <laughs>